Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach, and welcome to my vlog, where it's both my mission and my pleasure to highlight my creative journey in hopes of inspiring you, giving you specific takeaways, all in the hopes that it makes your journey a little bit easier. Now, before I get into it, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe, that we get all the various lessons and episodes that I put out right when I put them out. Thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It truly does mean a lot to me, as I hope it does to you. So, let's get into this. Uh, In this past week, um, you know, the main focus was uh, this feature film that I'm in pre-production on. And for the most part, in the coming months, that's kind of mostly what you're going to be hearing me talk a lot about, just the different phases of the project. Right, so you essentially kind of get to see it from start to finish. Um, well, not see it, but at least hear me talk about it in that way, much like I did with my first feature film, if um, you follow those episodes, which they're available in the archive as well. But, uh, but yeah, uh, if you're unfamiliar, this is a romance drama about two sets of American tourists that collide uh, in Bogota, Colombia. And yes, we will be filming in Bogota, Colombia. And in fact, if you would like to help us take the financial pressure off, uh, you can do so by going to our Indiegogo crowdfund where you can also learn more information about the project. Uh, Any contribution, large or small, is truly appreciated. If at this time you can't, uh, just because of the financial strain from the pandemic, then at least share, you know, that would be incredible. But anyway, so, A big portion of what I wanted to do last week was the more organizational side of things, right? So I, for the production side of things, I've been creating what I'm calling like a guidebook, right? That's my kind of fun name for it. And it basically has all the various information regarding our production uh, methods, you know, um, safety tips, um, just background information on Bogota, how we'll be traveling, do's and don'ts, the various locations, um, you know, and, you know, it has pictures and all that stuff, right? And it's not intended for any commercial value. It's just strictly for us. So, you know, I I find stuff online, copy and paste that in. Sometimes I write my own, you know, find images. And overall, as of now, it's like 200 pages worth of just information, you know, down to things like what sort of plugs one would need while in Colombia, what cell phone carriers could work and yada, 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 right? How to exchange money, where to draw cash, where not to, and, you know, basically traveling abroad. And so that was my main focus, um, you know, initially at the start of the week, you know, that's what I was going to like solely work on, just get this thing done. So that way the actors could have all this information as well as uh, the the crew traveling. And the good news is I'll talk more about that, but uh, you know, I did get that done. However, you know, that was going to, as I mentioned, that was going to be my sole focus really. Um, However, I was kind of sucked back into the creative side of things because um, John Comerford, who is an amazing screenwriter, uh, script doctor, an acting coach, he read the draft that I had, like, worked hard to finish basically by that, by that last Sunday. And, you know, then he read it really quickly. And basically on uh, Monday, if not Tuesday, we were talking about, like, what worked and uh, what needed to be improved. And overall, it worked pretty well. Um, it, it's just... In a weird way, it's a bunch of minor changes that add up to sweeping changes. And, you know, we were going into rehearsals that weekend, meaning this past Saturday, um, we we're going to have rehearsals. And so what I wanted was to make sure that I had um, a much more updated version of the, of, the, of the script to work with, right? Because it didn't make sense to work on material that I knew was uh, not as good as it could be and knowing that in the back of my mind, the solutions needed to do that, right? So I, um, you know, I kind of put the guidebook aside and started the rewrites and um, because they were just rewrites, overall I was doing like 40 pages a day and was able to crank it out pretty quick, sent the, uh, the cast and crew 
like by by early Thursday evening because I wanted to make sure that they had at least some time to, to read over the stuff. So I sent it to them and I marked up, um, you know, what parts I had changed and, you know, if it was major or minor. And most of it, like, like it really was minor, just lines of dialogue here and there. But as I said, you know, those small changes added up to a lot. And the real big sweeping changes came towards the end of the film in terms of the arcs. And so that was kind of what I worked on. Um, you know, and then once that was done, I was able to focus back to the guidebook um, in that sense. And, and I'll talk about that still a little further simply because I, I really want to get to the rehearsal side of it, right? So uh, for us, we got together on Saturday for about three hours and it was in person and it was just great to because not everyone knows each other. Um, these are all people that are gonna be traveling together, staying together, living together, acting together. And so, you know, it was a it was a good way to really break a lot of ice. And when you kind of think about it, we don't have like that much time left before we theoretically go. You know, it might seem like, oh, it's months away, but you know, months, quickly pass by and there's a lot of stuff left to be done, right? All doable, but action must be taken each and every single week. And so it was great to kind of really deep dive and, and get that going. Now, normally, you know, you would do a table read and things like that, but I kind of wanted to forego that because A, everyone already read the script even before the revised changes, right? Um, and so it just it just felt flat to me like if we if we were going to get everyone together in a physical space it was like let's really utilize this time you know otherwise we could have just done a table read via zoom um and i wanted really to to just get into the material and i wasn't looking for everyone to be perfect about it have it memorized no like literally people just hold the the phone their ipad their computer like whatever you know printed out pages didn't matter and let's just let's just work, let, let's say, that, you know, read what's on the page, but add physicality to it. And the way I had it intended in my mind was, you know, we would, we would do the scenes where they were interacting. And for some of the scenes that was like, you know, one character, I don't know, for lack of a better term, you know, doing a small action, whatever, I would just kind of highlight what's going on through that person's mind. Um, you know, what the intent of the scene was, and we would just keep it moving and so forth. So, and yeah, like, and initially, once everyone got there, um, you know, we spent, I don't know, let's say 30 minutes really going over, okay, here's the intent of the overall project, here's, you know, kind of where everyone's at in their lives in terms of characters, and so forth, right, the macro stuff. So that way, we could address that. And, you know, that would in then turn help with the micro of, you know, going scene by scene. And, you know, for the most part, we went in chronological order. So that was good. And it was great to see because, um, you know, I was able to really see the movie uh, alive, right? See and hear the words. And, you know, sometimes as a writer, when you're writing this stuff, you're like, oh, is this going to be good? Is it whatever? And, and it really put me at ease on a lot of things that, that they did work. Some things needed to be adjusted. Some things dialogue-wise felt a little bit clunky. So we changed it up on the spot as we went. Um, but for the most part, it was it was great, and there was a rhythm happening, as I mentioned. And you know, at the beginning, the scenes just by the sheer nature of it, right? No one was doing anything wrong. Um, you know, took a little bit. Um, you know, we we played with it, but then once, once after like let's say the first couple of scenes everyone really started hitting a rhythm and the adjustments I would have to make on the first go around were, were more minor, like really minor. Uh, and then, yeah, we were just flowing and it was just fantastic to, to really witness and see, you know, I filmed it on two different cameras or actually, I'm sorry, I brought two cameras, but I only ended up filming on one, um, you know, and for the most part, like I, I was going to try to do more of a like really, I was gonna be like the camera person and, and also, you know, rehearsing that for myself. Um, but by the sheer nature of it, uh, obviously I had to kind of stick more to 
the script and um, things like that. So I kind of just left the camera rolling on a wide shot and, you know, capture what it would type of thing. And that was fine, right? But it gave people the sense like, oh, there's a camera in my face and so forth. And, you know, I am essentially performing. So I think that added a good element. And um, yeah, I just, once we really started getting into it, um, I think like everyone, I saw the joy on people's faces, um, you know, in between the takes and so forth. And, and even, you know, in character, um, the fun that they were supposed to be having in certain moments really resonated on camera and just really fantastic to see it. So I'm glad I made that choice. And, um, I, you know, I, I talked with one of the actors and I was like, yeah, I mean, for the most part, um, the way I work is sort of, you can consider unconventional, but it really, if anything, it's more your, it's more of a European directing style. Right. And what I mean by that is, um, I don't know, call it an emphasis on, on chaos, call it more of an emphasis on character versus, you know, trying to nail down the lines. Um, you know, to me, it, it's about the physicality of, right, the, the movement, like them performing is more of a dance and what's coming out of their mouths is almost like secondary, you know, because if I can get them into a rhythm, they'll be, they'll know what to say as opposed to having to memorize um, the dialogue that is written, you know, and that was the other thing, like there's, because there's moments where there's like five people in a particular scene, you know, I said, it's going to be very difficult for me to write all the reactions and, you know, I wanted to cross talk and then just the, the, the natural lively banter back and forth. And so I said, there's going to be certain times, like it's just going to be impossible for me to write certain reactions and so forth. So, you know, I, I gave, a, you know, the various characters moments like, Hey, just go for it. If you feel like interjecting yourself in some sort of way, go for it. And that brought such a liveliness to it as well right so yeah to me it, it was just really really fantastic and you know the, the wonderful part um, about all of this is that there's a kinship I feel because I have another friend who's about to shoot a film that he's been meaning to um, in basically a month I have another friend who's um, who just who wrapped um, a feature in like, let's say March and they're coming up on picture lock with it. And he's starting another project. Then I'm another friend, um, who, whose script just got optioned. Um, and you know, there's a, there's a film grant like through like, like an actual government film grant, um, in Europe that came through and that might be happening. So there's a lot of, uh, <laughs> production that's about to be happening. Um, in my sphere of friends and that's very cool. And we were just kind of trading stories and things like that. And, you know, with one of them I was talking and it's very interesting to me. You know, I said, you know, um, one of the things that, um, you know, is a red flag that you should watch out for. Cause as we we're talking about this, I said, you know, when, when someone says like, how, how am I coming off across? And because, and, because there's ways of, you know, they might be concerned about the performance, but there's certain ways that can come across in the way that they're asking the question where it's really more about how do I look versus, you know, what's best for the movie. And there's that subtle difference. Um, but I said that, that, you know, anytime someone's really worried about how they're coming across, that's a red flag to me as opposed to, is it serving the movie? A am I nailing the character that you want? Um, is this a good performance that you get camera wise, what I need and so forth. And it's very interesting to me because, um, yeah, just that aspect of, of the self indulgence, you know, another kind of version of this, um, that I started to recognize, um, as, as I was talking with these various people, I was like, you know what? It's interesting. Sometimes, sometimes there's people, um, that we've all met in other areas that that aren't prepared and rather than like take the ownership on themselves they'll blame it on um, production or whoever you know everyone anyone but themselves to be like oh this is you do you're doing it incorrectly and so forth and you know this isn't my process and whatever else as opposed to just admitting like you, you didn't come prepared and so now you kind of feel like a fool because everyone else did and they brought their a, a game and rather than admit like you just you're just trying to now lash out at the world for your own mistake and 
Um, it's just very kind of interesting to me. And for the most part, you know, now that I can identify these things because I've, you know, have all these years um, of my own experiences of learning from other people's experiences, it's very interesting to me to see. And yeah, for me, I don't, I don't have a tolerance for that. And so it's great that we can essentially guide each other in these ways um, and be able to look out for, for those things. Um, because yeah, you know, um, and that, that's something that luckily with this, the group of people that I'm working with, there is a trust there. And I, you know, as much as I can be, I'm always continuing to be upfront about, you know, the idea of adaptability, um, the idea that, uh, you know, we, there's a lot of obstacles and challenges in the way that we're doing things, but, um, you know, and the methodology is going to be a little bit different, but just because the method is different than what people are acclimated to does not mean the result has to suffer. In fact, quite the opposite, you know, um, and that's why I love Robert Rodriguez. He has his style called El, the El Mariachi style. And it's all about this idea of just, I mean, he shot a feature film, an action film for $7,000. Um, and that was on film, okay, on film, which film is pretty costly, right? And he was able to pull it off. And, you know, some people have cited it as like, you know, one in a million type of thing, but no, it's, it's replicatable, right? And the, the idea is like, whatever works for you, you know, and instead of just putting money towards solutions, you get creative with the solutions and, and you find ways around it. Hence why for me, I chose to have rehearsals instead of just a table read, because for me, a table read is going to be boring and it wasn't going to, it wasn't never going to tell me ultimately what I needed to see as far as the script, if it worked or not, you know, and that was another thing I, I, I actually, um, you know, I talked with, with the actors and, you know, um, and I know where they're coming from, right? Because they kind of want to know of like, well, will ever, will ever the script be locked down? And it's very fascinating to me because in Hollywood productions, you know, uh, that never ultimately happens. Even on days of, you get these things called sides and it just comes with a ton of revisions of like, hey, I, you were prepared for the scene. We changed the scene a bunch, but here they are. So get to learn in this scene. And the way I view it, it's like, you know, uh, you know, for the actors, right? With each rehearsal or whatever else, um, it's a chance to improve the performance. Well, no different for me, right? With each rehearsal and, and perform, it's a chance for me to improve the script. Therefore, uh, make their roles better, right? Improve their performances because they'll have better material to work off of. So, and, you know, a film is never really finished until it's, finally filmed, edited, and, you know, mixed and all that, right? And, you know, it's, it's the most cliche thing in the world, but, you know, you write a film three times, the script that, that that is written, the way when it's shot, and the way it's edited. And so, you know, in that sense, yeah, just by the sheer nature of what we're doing, it's going to continue to change just based off of, you know, I'm writing it one way, but some of these locations I've not seen. And so, once we're there in Colombia, and you know we're going to be reacting to the environment, and and that's part of part of the rehearsals. What I said to the to the actors, all of them, I said, when we do this, I'm going to put you in different positions because I never want you to get married to w one uh, form of physicality. I want you to be able to react whether you're you know on this side of the room, on this side of the room, facing this way in a small space, in a large space for each of the scenes because I don't want you to get into I want you to get in a rhythm as a character interacting with the people around you versus the, versus the space. And I think the reason it worked is because um, they got on board with that and they were doing it, you know, and we did switch, switch around, you know, we would do one rehearsal uh, in a particular part of the, the room, the space. And then for the next one, after they got it, I said, all right, let's switch it to this side. And boom, they started really nailing it. So, um, you know, I'm just really confident by that um, and what they brought to the table. So really, really exciting stuff um, for me. And then um, this past weekend, you know, um, over in between. So let's talk about this guidebook, right? Um, during the times when I needed a break from the rewrite, I would kind of work on the guidebook. Um, but then I got to this weekend and there was still quite a bit left to really put in. 
to the guidebook, mainly about like the locations and um, filming style and things of that nature. Uh, the stuff about like where the U.S. embassies are, how to exchange money, personal safety, you know, where we're staying, that type of thing. That was luckily, you know, kind of in there because I've been working on it um, little by little. But um, but yeah, so after rehearsals, really, um, you know, I basically like made it a point like, okay, I've got a day and a half. Let me just really nail down this guidebook. And luckily by like midnight of Sunday night, meaning yesterday, I I finally put everything together, you know. Um, I was like, okay, this is, this is comprehensive enough. Um, let me send this off. You know, it's not a final thing. You know, at least this gives them... You know, a chance to really study it and they can let me know if they have any questions if there's things missing that they would like to see um, I mean like I said I mean it's 200 pages right now so uh, pretty pretty comprehensive um, in that way so yeah I got that done and you know John is gonna be uh, revising you know uh, I, I sent the revision to John he's gonna be working on it I've I've got ideas based on rehearsals as well so once once he really works through the material, then I'll be back on that. In the meantime, my focus will be um, there's a couple of particular sections and shots and uh, scenes that I want to do in a cool, unique way. So identifying those, um, also figuring out like the various props, um, you know, coming up with costuming at least in, in enough to um, be able to send it off to. Um, the actors so that way we can start planning that and you know I, we've kind of come up with a preliminary schedule of rehearsals so i sent that off i kind of overloaded it knowing that some dates wouldn't work so i'm getting confirmation on which dates do which which dates don't and that's how we're moving forward you know um, in that way so it's very exciting stuff um the other aspect um last week uh this is kind of related um slash also not, you know, it is a standalone, but uh, I was trading in some older gear, um, you know, like film gear that I had, and some of it, uh, you know, I could have sold uh, through, let's say, OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace, but I was like, you know what, let me, let me just, I, you know, rather than like have it sit and like kind of wait, let me just get a, a little bit less for it, but know that I, I've sold it um, sooner rather than later through, you um, you know, these companies that, that, that buy old equipment, whether Adorama and so forth. And, you know, so I, so I went that route and it was interesting because, you know, they finally received the stuff and they were like, okay, here's your quote, you know, um, it's for $70. It's like, wait a minute, that's not $70 worth, right? So, so I called them and was like, hey, like, run these numbers by me, explain it to them. And they were like, oh, it doesn't work. It's, you know, it's only good, good for trade in parts. And I was like, interesting, because it was all working extremely fine for me. In fact, I was using it just the other week for, on various projects. Like, it's tried and reliable for me, right? Like, this is, there's no way none of this stuff works. And I was like, even, you know, I, I know, like, it's very specific in terms of the SD cards that it needs to take, because that was one of the things, you know, there's an older camera that I, I, I put in and they were like, you know, it doesn't record this. And I was like, really? Um, and the guy was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, no, we, we know that it requires special cards. I was like, do me a favor and just reevaluate it. And it's just, it's kind of shitty because this is not my first experience of this. And I don't know about for you, if you've ever gone through this, but like, you almost like, you almost have to ask for the reevaluation because, um, uh, you know, a day and a half or two days later, you know, they called me like, yeah, we, we actually evaluated and you were right. It does work and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and then they gave me the new quote, the, the more accurate quote of like what it was always supposed to be. I said, okay, very interesting. You know, I'm glad, I'm glad we did that. But I was just, I was like, this is just so <sighs> shitty that I had to go through this process, you know, that, that, yeah, of course, like I, I knew it would work, right? Unless like, and cause you know, I mean, there's a part of me where I thought like, okay, you know, the way we wrapped it when we shipped it off, like they're gonna get damaged along the way. And now like, you know, I don't wanna just get $70 for what is, you know, hundreds of dollars worth of equipment. Um, and if it gets sent back to me, then does it mean I just have this shit broken equipment, right? 
you know, that now I can't even resell through OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace. But, you know, still, I pushed them on that to reevaluate it, and they did. And lo and behold, I was correct. It all worked and so forth. But I don't know. It's just, it's just so shitty to me that that's like the thing. Like, why? Do your job the first time because it always worked from the get-go. So why, why am I, you know? Like, are you trying to screw me? I don't think that's what it was ultimately. But it's like, damn. Like, do your job, you know? Anyway, um, the other last part, this is not related to any projects that um, I'm working on, um, but it's something near and dear to my heart because I'm someone, you know, hopefully as, as you've seen uh, my various episodes and so forth, I care a lot about supporting those around me, both from a creative standpoint and just, just as human beings. And, you know, there's this person in my life who last year um, was going through a bad batch, you know, for all intents and purposes, was pretty depressed. And, you know, there was a lot of people that this person was reaching out to. And, you know, some of them would call me and be like, yo, I can't, you know, I can't talk to this person anymore because they're just so depressing. It's just, it brings me down. And, I'll admit, like, you know, I was talking with this person and every conversation that I had took a lot of energy out out of me because, like, I was really trying to uplift the person. But I am so glad that, like, I did not give up on this person that I stuck with it because, you know, now this person really, you know, is finding their way again and, and has regained that that joyous spirit that I that 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 I knew knew this person to have. Now I'm not going to take the credit for it necessarily. You know, um, the work goes to them, but I'm glad I, I I stuck by them in that sense and was able to witness it. And it is a shame that um, yeah that that people kind of give up on other people. Um, you know, I I see it. It's the insidious side of like self help and and all this like. You know, equal, I, I don't know. I just, I, th- I think there's, we, we preach one thing sometimes, but don't act upon it. And, and it saddens me, you know, like and there's many people that I, that I know that advocate mental health and so forth. And there was an example of, you know, um, they were writing an Airbnb and the, I'm sorry, not an Airbnb, um, an Uber, <laughs> uh, Airbnb is on my mind because of, you know, um, of this Columbia movie and all the places we're going to be staying, right? But uh, as an Uber, you know, they, they they were in this Uber and they filmed themselves, you know, uh, rolling their eyes as like the Uber driver was kind of, you know, unloading his soul, if you will. Um, they were like, yeah, this is what we want to be doing. Um, just listening to our Uber driver, um, you know, um, and his whatever life. And his problems or whatever. And it was very kind of mean-spirited. Yet all the stuff that like these people post about is all about like, you know, helping others and, you know, seeing, you know, seeing people as equals and so forth. And yet they're like kind of denigrating this person. I'm like, you're not practicing what you preach. Like, you know, who knows what this guy's, you know, what I, I didn't, they didn't, they had the other person's voice muted. Like it was just kind of like a, a video um with a caption so i don't even know if the uber driver was a you know what what gender um or whatever but but the point remains of like you don't know what this person is going through and i know you're not like outing them on social media ultimately but you are kind of making fun of the situation so it, in, in a way you're kind of making fun of yourselves because w- what you talk about is, is bullshit you know and and yeah like you know, I, I think we think self-care and all this stuff is is just all about us. and But it's not an excuse to be narcissistic. And so when I think back to my friend, all the people that gave up on this person just because, like, yeah, they were going through a bad batch. And, you know, they, they really need somebody in their life. And, and, you know, it's sad that other people gave up on that to me. It really is. So, um, you know, in that sense... I don't know. Be there for those in your life. You don't know how much it truly does mean to them in the end. So that's what I would like to leave you on. 
Thank you so much for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, please ask away in the comments section or hit me up on social media. Likewise, share any thoughts. I would appreciate um, hearing from you. I love conversing with you. Um, if you think this episode might be a benefit to somebody in your life, please share it with them. I certainly would appreciate it as I appreciate you. I hope to see you next time.